David Lawson, The Physics of Breakfast. The uh, lecture I was going to mention was the lecture about the physics of breakfast that was just uh, about a week or a week and a half ago. Um, this lecture covered the physics of how coffee, when spilled, forms a, cough, like, forms a ring of particles, uh, how eggs cook, and the physics of cereal in a bowl. The main thing that I learned that I didn't already know was about how coffee rings form when coffee is spilled. This, a this happens because coffee isn't exactly a homogeneous mixture. It's made up of both the oils and also little particles that make it through the filter from the coffee beans. And because of this, when the liquid is in a drop and it's spilled on a drop, those little particles go towards the edges and they stick to the edges. And then when the drop is drying, those edges stay pinned in that area to minimize energy, to minimize surface area, um, and because, particularly because of the adhesion of water. Uh, and so when the coffee dries, it goes from a spherical cap and then it smushes down until the edges where the particles were, they dry right there and form a ring, but there's very few particles in the middle of the drop where you may be able to see just uh, the other oils and such drying down. Something I learned that I already kind of knew about was how eggs cook. I already knew that kind of that eggs cook by the de denaturing the protein it has nothing to do with water leaving the egg. Um, and one thing that's interesting about that is that something related to eggs is that there's three kinds of scrambled eggs. There's British scrambled eggs, there's American scrambled eggs, and there's French scrambled eggs. French, uh, let me start with British scrambled eggs. They're usually made in a pot and you whisk fairly frequently, but not all the time at a medium temperature. When this happens, you get, when the egg is in contact with the pot at the bottom, you get medium-sized egg curds, if that makes sense, where the egg is cooked and the protein deemed natures. The, um, American, fried, uh, American style scrambled eggs are made in like a frying pan where you let sheets of egg curds be created and then you scrape them towards the center and you have a larger kind of egg curd. Now French is the really interesting one. French style scrambled eggs are made uh, in a boiler, in a sense, a double boiler, where you have a gla some sort of pot over a pot of boiling water. The boiling water gets hot, it evaporates, and it heats the bottom of the bowl. And then you continuously whisk the eggs as they're in the bowl as they slowly cook. So because of this, the eggs never really reach higher than water, temp water boiling temperature, higher than 100 degrees Celsius. So the curds that are formed are very small, and so it's very creamy kind of eggs, and they're also very not wet, but there's a lot of water in the eggs. They're very moist. So that's one thing that I thought of when I thought about when you mentioned the eggs. Now, one thing that was mentioned that really sparked my curiosity was regarding the cereal. Uh, it reminded me of something else that I saw about whether cereal is magnetic, in which case it, it at least is attracted by a magnet. Here's a video clip of that. As you can see, the magnet very slightly pulls the cereal. As you can see right there, the cereal, when there's multiple together, tend to stick together. The reason that the cereal is attracted to a magnet is twofold. First off, cereal has iron added to it for health benefits. Usually cereal has upwards of 50, maybe 60, 70% of your daily need, daily requirements for iron. So if you crush up cereal, like Cheerios, Honey Bunches of Oats, I don't know, in a mortar and pestle, and then you put a strong magnet next to it, you'll get little bits of iron on that magnet from the cereal. The second thing that causes the cereal to be attracted to the magnet is due to an effect of water called diamagnetism. Now, a magnet of course, has a magnetic field that it exerts on like the surrounding area. Now, water, when it's exposed to a magnetic field, then exerts an opposite polarity magnetic field in reverse. So, if you put a magnet next to water, it will be very slightly depressed by the magnetic field. And you can see this if you put um, by the reflection of water. If you put like a grid next to water and you depress it down, you can then see how the grid is kind of warped due to the magnet. Now, what this also does is this creates a lower area where if the cereal then flows into that area, there'll be a lower, lower overall energy, a lower potential energy. 
So the cereal tends to want to flow into that little divot that's formed, causing it to then be attracted to, the mag to where the magnet was. Now this effect actually can also attract other things like paper or any other like small objects that can float, like paper clips, or I guess maybe pa like plastic paper clips um, to, the, to the magnet. And so that's another thing that can be affected by the magnet.